Very little that we do makes a very big difference in terms of saving their lives and making them live longer. And so we need to be able to balance risk versus benefit when on scene with the patient. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be doing trauma. We will be starting off with the conversations about fluids and backboards and what we should be doing on scene to a tool that you can use to assess the severity and try and predict the outcome of a traumatic patient. Let's jump straight in. So fluids and trauma, we pretty much understand that cold, dirty seawater like saline makes patients cold, which stops their clotting, which makes them bleed because you are increasing pressure. It also dilutes their clotting factors. It dilutes their hemoglobin. It doesn't really help. It also slows us down on scene. So when we are dealing with patients who are in trauma, we should be putting them in the ambulance or in the transport and taking them straight to hospital. And anything we want to do, we should be doing it while we're moving. Unless obviously it's a life-saving intervention such as chest decompression or CPR or RSI if they're not breathing or you know if they have no airway or whatever the case is, that's obviously a decision you're gonna have to make. When it comes to spine boards and backboards, obviously spine boards, that's long time now coming. If you're not understanding that, I'll drop some more links on the spine board versus backboard conversation. The other tool that I was chatting about is called the shock index. So what is shock index? Well, you take the heart rate and you divide it by the systolic blood pressure. So if I have a shock index of above one or equal to or above one, it is a good indicator of um, a patient requiring a massive blood transfusion. So it pretty much um, predicts outcomes. So if I have a heart rate of 100 and a systolic blood pressure of 100, it means I have a shock index of one, which means I am probably gonna need blood later on. If I have a heart rate of 150 and a systolic blood pressure of 100, I have a shock index of 1.5, which is massive, and you're definitely gonna need a blood transfusion. Another um, real useful tool with this is that when you get to the patient, let's say they have a shock index of one, and by the time you get to hospital, they have a shock index of 1.5, that's a massive indicator of a patient going to need blood, probably not going to survive. Um, I've had a, a fair deal of patients who, who, have a, who have had a shock index of above one, and I think most of them didn't make it. So it's quite a clear indicator. Uh, just remember that it's only for trauma, uh, not for medical patients. And um, I will drop links to the um, journals that have um, assessed shock index and how they have assisted in hospital and out of hospital and all of those kind of scenarios. So definitely a tool that we should be considering. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hit like and subscribe. And if you have any comments or topics you'd like me to handle, just drop it below. And thanks for watching. Bye for now.